ba ba da ba 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 Hello listeners and welcome to a very special night at KPUT. On this lovely Christmas Eve, I will lead a small choir on a remote caroling expedition through the streets of Dyersville. Mr. Quigley, will we be out all night? Uh, no, we should be back before Santa comes by, Grobius. But before we venture outside, I will introduce the members of our quartet. Jenny Geshrin, the youngest daughter of General Manager Fidel Geshrin, will sing soprano. Only because Daddy asked me. I could be home right now trying on my pre-Christmas clothes. And joining her as our alto is Myra Fenster, our secretary at KPUT. It will be an honor to do extra work for this station, even if it's only 32 degrees outside. Our singing tenor will be KPUT's resident radio voyeur, Gromius Clip. Hey, I hope the temperature drops to minus 32. A frozen audience. Now that's entertainment. And yours truly will sing the bass line while I carry our portable Kaput Pack battery pack. So we'll be live on location. Oh, does everyone have their music? If you call the saccharine music, Holly Jolly Christmas, Frosty the Snowman, Silent Night. Remember, Mr. Quigley, that these books are on loan from the Dyersville High School Music Department. We have to keep them in top shape. Uh, my choir uses these every day. I'm sure they've been abused since before your time, Miss Fenster. Uh, as you folks get ready, I need to go make a phone call. Excuse me. Hello, uh, Ned Campbell? <coughs> uh, yes, it is, Mr. Quigley. Oh, will you be home tonight? <coughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, no, I don't have any books for you, but we're doing a remote caroling, uh, and I wondered if you'd make some cookies and cocoa for us. I'm bringing three people. If you could have something ready for them, I'm sure they'd enjoy it. Uh, no, no, don't prepare a bedtime story. Just the food and drink. Thanks. We'll be there in a bit. Okay, everyone. Uh, let's gear up for the Winter Wonderland. Bring only your books and your voices. Can we at least pass out toxic candy canes? This show's going to be a drag. Oh, Mr. Clip, don't be such a party pooper. The worst that we'll do is trip into a snowdrift. At least I have some polyurethane fashion boots in case we do. My big city brother bought them for me. He lives in Solon. Now I want you all to remember that we are performers tonight. We will not stop caroling until we sing for some audience. Hopefully the audience is listening now, so they'll avoid going outdoors. Oh, Gromie, so where's your holiday spirit? Mrs. Fenster and Miss Geshrin are ready to spread good cheer. Jenny, dear, don't, don't be so concerned about your clothes now. No one can see you on the radio. But the audience will see me, and if there aren't any cute guys where we go, I'm heading for home. Uh, well, since we're united in spirit, well, let's go a caroling. Here we are, listeners, speaking to you on the road to a Dyersville audience. This will be quite fun, if only the wind stops messing my hair. Miss Fenster, you need some colorful earmuffs like mine to keep your hair picture perfect. Though in your case, it's a picture of Dorian Gray. How's that battery pack holding, Mr. Quigley? Oh, it's fully charged, and with this mic, we'll be on the air all night. Damn, I was hoping for a meltdown. Uh, why don't we all take out our songbooks and rehearse as we walk? Mr. Quigley, don't make me sing stuff I sing in class. We sing everything in this book. Well, um, I thought we'd warm up with Jingle Bells. I'm sure we all know it in four-part harmony. And listeners, here's the taste of the magnificent music soon to please an audience. <clears throat> Jingle bells, jingle bells, ring off to the day. The diner dies in suicide. No, 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 hold it, hold on. That, that's not how it goes. Don't your books have the notes? I, I think so, but my trifocals keep frosting up. My book's just covered with ink blots. Mine has notes. I wrote these to my friend Marcia. She sits next to me in choir. Uh, well, since we don't all have the same version, uh, let's not do it. Everybody, <clears throat> remove jingle bells from our repertoire. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> No, oh, wait, I, I didn't mean that it's... Oh, somebody grab those pages. Come back here. You're... Uh, uh, devout listeners, we return you to our studio programming while the trio and I recoup our music. Oh, what am I going to tell the school? Coming this fall to a theater near you. Death has a new name. A new face. Oh, let's get out of this place. It gives me the creep. Just one minute, Lisa. When the groundhog comes out of his hole, we'll see how long winter's gonna last. Nothing can prepare you for the spine-tingling, teeth-chattering, goosebumpy, knee-knocking, sweaty-palmed, elbow-tickling, belly-button-pressing terror that is... The groundhog's coming up out of the hole, and he's got a chainsaw. Ah! Groundhog Day, the only national holiday not yet made into a spider film. Look at this, Chief. Two more kids cut to ribbons. I don't know what this means, but I do know that it means six more weeks of murder and carnage. Groundhog Day, the reddest red-letter day of them all, starts Friday at a theater near me. 
new from Ramo, the super amazing problematic. It slices, it dices, it purees, it fillets, it tenderizes, neutralizes, separates, and liquidates. It's the incredible problematic. Get rid of all those other household appliances which do only one thing. Simply place those other appliances in this remarkable new appliance which does only one thing. The incomparable problematic. It whips, it rips, it mixes, it nixes, it blends, it ends. In just a few seconds, turn the most incriminating documents into confetti for when charges are dropped. Turn the most bothersome house guests into a delicious healthy breakfast drink. The extraordinary problematic. It mangles, it tangles, it slashes and thrashes. It liquefies, nullifies, and can even make julienne fries out of julienne linen. It comes apart easily for cleaning, but do not attempt to clean without proper safety gloves. Do not immerse in water or get any part of the main body wet. Do not have uncovered while turned on or plugged in. Keep out of reach of children and pets. It's the awe-inspiring problematic. How much do you think we're asking for this amazing wonder? $39.95? $49.95? But wait, you also get the problematic junior and the daddy problematic at no extra cost. But now how much do you think it costs? $79.95? $89.95? $99.95? Yes, ninety-nine ninety-five for the problematic, problematic junior and the daddy problematic. If not 100% satisfied, simply place them inside each other and turn them on. And also new from Ramo, the super amazing stupendous. It's so amazing, we couldn't give it a name. It astounds, it confounds, it excites and delights, electrifies and stupefies. It's the super amazing stupendous. To order, simply do nothing. To not order, call 1-800-354-2391. That's 1-800-337-3217. That number again, 1-800-351-1098. Okay, okay, everybody, sit down and shut up. I now bring to order this meeting of the organization known as THEY, which stands for the Hackneyed Epigram Yielders. Our motto is, you know what they say. Now, last time we met, you guys came up with some real boners, including such memorables as, nothing succeeds like success, and you can't win for losing. I hope this time you fortune cookie failures have finally come up with some proverbs that folks will take to, like a... Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's just get started, okay? We had a request a while back from some guy named Gandhi who wanted something about passive resistance. Did anyone come up with anything yet? Clausen. I came up with two wrongs do not make a right, but three lefts do. Anything else? I also came up with an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, leaving the whole world blind and in need of dentures. Fine, we'll go with that. Let's move on. Vogel. Sir? You were supposed to come up with some adages to uplift. What have you got? Well, sir, I have, it's always darkest before the dawn. What do you mean? Right before the dawn? Well, yeah, I suppose. It's not always darkest right before the dawn. It's darkest when it's only halfway between dusk and dawn. What else have you got? I also have, it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Would you mind telling me how you know that it's better? Have you both loved and never loved? How can you have done something while at the same time you never have done it, huh? You can't. So you can't be objective and compare the two, can you? These things aren't called truisms for nothing, Vogel. But I suppose the only way to say something uplifting is to lie. Let's go on to sports platitudes. <coughs> Whitaker. Uh, I came up with, uh, when you're hot, you're hot, and it's not over till it's over. Well, those are profound. Maybe we should put you in charge of statements of the obvious, Whitaker. But I guess that's just about as deep as the sports people can understand anyway. Let's move on. Roop. Yes, sir. I have birds of a feather flock together and opposites attract. Yeah, all right. That was pretty much say it all. We'll send them off. Now, is there anything else before we conclude this amazingly fruitful evening? Clausen? Well, sir, I have a saying for the summer months. It's not the heat, it's who you know. It's not the heat, it's who you know? Mmm. How about, it's not the heat, it's the stupidity? Uh, how about, it's not the heat, it's the kitchen? How about, it's not the heat, it's those damn people who say it's not the heat? Well, to each his own, I suppose. How about each to his own, I suppose? How about his own to each? How about you can bring each to his own, but you can't make him drink? Gentlemen, how about no, each to his own? Each. Each. How about each to her own? He doesn't own each. He doesn't own his. He doesn't own hers. K-P-U-T. Welcome back to a KPUT remote broadcast, live on the road to Dyersville. My caroling companions and I have nearly reached our first stop, the home of Mayor Willard Trenton. Look at those decorations on his house. My, our mayor must be having a warm family get-together. Maybe they're being eaten alive by the god dogs. Before we can enter the mayor's home, we must sing a tune. So, uh, turn your songbooks to page, uh, uh, where are the page numbers? We erased them all one day in class. <laughs> Great prank, huh? Uh, well, Jenny, uh, find us, deck the halls, and start it while I get the mayor. 
deck the halls and deck the halls again and keep decking the halls and deck the halls more and deck the halls. Hello, what's going on here? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's our town mayor. Uh, we thank you for being a prompt audience, Mayor Trenton. Well, I'm always prompt when people are trespassing on my property. Didn't you read the message in the Christmas lights? It looks like it says, Happy Xmas, go awa. Damn it, I forgot the why again this year. But you're still invading my space. Mayor Trenton, don't you recognize us? We're from your hometown radio station. Oh, you're citizens of Dyersville? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, uh, why of course you can walk on my lawn, huh? I'm sorry I didn't recognize my voters and uh, my future voters, right, little girl? I'm 15, you jerk. Ha, ha, ha. Well, it's good to see you out and about. Now just keep right on walking to the edge of my property or I'll call the police. Uh, you don't understand, Mr. Mayor. This is a vocal quartet and we're live on KPUT. Oh, uh, you mean I'm on the radio now? That's right. Oh, uh, well, uh, Mr. Uh... Uh, Quigley. Oh, Mr. Quigley, I'm so glad you stopped by the mayor's house to give us a song or two. Well, we haven't even performed yet. Uh, couldn't we come in and sing for your family? Uh, well, I'd let you, but they've all gone deaf. But thanks again for visiting me, Mayor Trenton, your choice for mayor in Dyersville. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, uh, Quigley, one more thing. Mm-hmm. Next time you have an impromptu caroling? Yes? Schedule it with me so I can be out of town. Well, I wouldn't elect that man to be the next Scrooge. Jeez, I hope Rudolph leaves a big present on his lawn. He didn't even let us in. I'll bet he's hiding his cute sons from me. No, no, songbirds. We can't let this ruffle our feathers. There are others who want us to perform. Where are they? Uh, downtown, of course. We'll serenade the shoppers and merchants there. And with more people, there'll be more warmth. I hope you're right, Mr. Quigley. My legs are numbing. Yeah, there's bound to be lots of last-minute shoppers downtown. There there were last Christmas. Are we going to contact these merchants before we invade their space? Uh, no, we'll just see on the streets until someone invites us inside. Or hauls us away. Uh, so we'll come back to our live caroling on KPUT after this station break. Coming this Christmas to a drive-in near you. Horror has a new name, a new face. Lance, I thought I saw something moving in those woods. Well, they sure are spooky woods, all right. Let's take a look. Won't we need this? That's okay. Even though it is pitch black outside, we shouldn't need a flashlight. It'll only take a minute. They were young. They were carefree. They were bright as three-watt bulbs. How could they know? Boy, is it eerie. These trees could be hiding any number of savage things just waiting to spring on us. Let's screw. No, I... I can't. What? Are you worried about this rash I have? It's nothing, I swear. No, I'm worried about that tree that's coming at us with a machete! Die, stupid kids! Arbor Day, the only national observance day not yet made to a spider film. Well, Sheriff, what do you make of this? God, these kids have been hacked to shreds. Let me say this, I won't rest until I've tracked the killer down. Now I need some long, stiff drinks. Will you be having lunch with those drinks, Sheriff? I think that I shall never see a film as deadly as a tree. Arbor Day, coming this fall. The following program was pre-recorded before a live studio microphone. Hello, fellow listeners. Gromius Clip here in the studios of KPUT, ready to bring you a Christmas special beyond imagination. My patented Voyorama machine, known to some as the <coughs> CIA's Zeta-1 surveillance device, will aid me in bringing you classic family entertainment sounds from across the nation. I figure this is a nice alternative to the typical family get-together shows, and you wouldn't want to meet my relatives anyway. Now let's extend the Magno Super Antenna, and it's magic time. Our first initial stop is a house in New York, where two family members are trimming the Christmas tree. Hand me the angel with the candle, son, and we'll be all done with the tree. Gee, Dad, this ornament is awfully warm. That's strange. It was sitting in the cold attic all year. Oh, I see. It's the candle that's hot. You're right. The cardboard angel is holding a lit candle. And it's on fire! Look at the lights now, Dad. Our whole house will be lit up. Doesn't that scene make you feel warm all over? <laughs> Our next stop is a kitchen in Nebraska, where Grandma is baking cookies. Don't touch those yet, Brian. They haven't cooled. Oh, Grandma, can I have just one? Oh, try these holiday cookies instead. Thanks. Hey, these look like the ones you made last year. Ugh! <laughs> oh, my mouth is bleeding. <laughs> they are the ones I made last year, and I'm sick of 
you stealing all the warm ones? Boy, oh boy, this is entertainment you can taste. Next, we'll tune into a fantastical scene involving a sales clerk and a boyfriend after hours with some stolen merchandise. Hello, fellow listeners. This is not Gromius Clip, but it could be. Okay, okay. I don't know how my brother Mobius Clip got in the way of my Voyorama beam, but the joke's over, Mobius. I'm tuning you out. Ah, uh-huh, you can't. I'm on my own homemade Voyorama. That's impossible. You couldn't build one because you've never seen a plan. I found them in your dresser drawer and copied them. Now, as I extend my Magnus Super Antenna, I'm going to bring you and your listeners a horrifying sound for the holidays. Mom! Mobius, is that you? Ladies and staff infections, the second interference with my show is Gertrude Clip, known to some of us as Ma. Grumiest Clip, you shouldn't use that tone of voice in front of a radio audience. Don't rag your eyes on me, Mom. This is my own show. Well, Mr. Radio Waves, it's fine and dandy to listen to the whole wide world when you don't even take time to write, phone, or tune me in on your voyeurama. That's why we decided to jump into your show today, Grumius. We knew you wouldn't visit, and we didn't want you missing your family. Believe me, I wouldn't miss any of you. Now we can all listen to the Christmas Eve Mass on the radio. Except you don't have to sit together. And we can open presents from where we are and get instant complaints. It's almost like being there. Well, uh, you're there, Ma. I'm here with Gromius. No, I'm here alone. And you two are just obscenical noises corrupting my show. Make way for a new sound. But we can't leave before we say hello to your favorite uncle. I'll just extend my uh, Magna Carta, watch my call it here, and... Uh... Hiya, folks. Glad you could drop by. <laughs> oh, jeez. Not Uncle Gregory. Say, is that my nephew Gromius or getting all huffy on the other end? You never change, you know, boy. Like the time you kissed my rabid pet dog under the mistletoe. We could have cut the anger in your breast. I remember the year little Gromia stayed up all night to see Santa Claus. And got stuck in the chimney. I don't remember that. That's because we had to revive you after you fell under the fire that we lit. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay, enough is enough. Time to tune back into that tree on fire or the kid with a chip sweet tooth. Man, damn it, why aren't the dials moving? I figured out how to jam the Voyorama, Gromius. It was all in the blueprints. Say, Mobius, this was a great idea, building us all for your amas. Yeah. I'm going to tune in Grandma Clip's toiki, pasting in the oven. Oh, Gromius, isn't it wonderful that we could all be in the same airspace on Christmas Eve? Now that you mention it, it is. Because that means I can say goodbye without seeing your faces. Here comes that off switch. Hold it, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, to all those listening, I had planned to present holiday entertainment, which was both painful and discomforting, but not to yours truly. Luckily, however, I have succeeded in alienating my family for yet another year. And for those who hope this special would be a warm, cuddly, it's a wonderful miracle on Santa Claus Lanesy type show, get your own voyeurama. Better yet, change the radio station to something with... Hey, hey don't. Hey, that's just a figure speech. <laughs> When quickly back on location with Chromius Clip, Jenny Geshen, and Myra Fenster. Any minute now, we'll reach the downtown shops teeming with happy customers and friendly merchants. So what song will we murder now? I don't know, but my book's getting awfully heavy. I'm still up for some singing, though. Well, I can both carry a book and carry a tune. We've got to sing something we all know. Hmm, uh, well, we couldn't get through Deck the Halls, so first let's get rid of that one. Uh, no, I, I didn't mean to... Uh, well, uh, there are still pages in that book. Uh, if we hurry, we can find a tune before we meet the crowds. So we're singing the crowds of snowmen, right? What? All of the storefronts are black. No, they're not. Some have Christmas lights blinking onto the vacant streets. I, I thought you said scores of last minute shoppers were here, Jenny. I saw lots of people downtown last Christmas, but I spent last Christmas in Chicago. Oh, uh, wait. I see some lights on in one store. Uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, what, where are all the Christmas shoppers? They've all gone home by now. Most shops closed hours ago. Well, you guys anyway, Yells? Uh, no, just a quartet of carolers. I'm Quinn Quigley. Man, Buck Swanson. I, I'm just closing up my antique shop here. Uh, don't you folks have anything better to do on Christmas Eve? Actually, we do, but Nanook dragged us out uh, here. We're doing a live radio broadcast. Oh, yeah? Are you from KPUT? Oh, that's right. Oh, huh. You look much smaller in real life. Uh, Mr. Swanson, can you let us rest in your antique shop? For just a few minutes. We promise not to sing and shatter your glass Now, well. just a minute, group. Let me do the bargaining here. <clears throat> Mr. Swanson, if you let us into your fine store, we'll entertain you with a holiday number, and your reaction will be heard throughout the KPUT listening area. <laughs> you got to be kidding. A quartet caroling on Christmas to a bunch of empty shops? 
That's ridiculous. I, I can't help you. Besides, I'm late for a church service where a choir is supposed to perform. I just love four-part harmony. So good night, and don't expect me to be open tomorrow. I would yell at him, but I can hardly breathe out here. I'd love to stuff his stocking with something wet and smelly. Ooh, I'm telling Daddy to stop running his commercials. Uh, don't, don't despair, group. There is still hope. But you heard Mr. Swanson. He doesn't have Christmas hours. Yeah, and I'm not going to come out again to sing to empty buildings. Mr. Quigley, let's call it quits now while we still moderately like each other. Uh, but we still have cocoa and cookies waiting at Ned Campbell's house. Let's just move down the road and hope that we'll have an audience there. <laughs> oh, come on, people. We still have listeners to entertain. And listeners, we'll return to this live broadcast once we reach Ned's house. Coming this summer to a theater near you. Terror has a new name, a new face, a new car, a new vacation home just outside of Miami off Highway 6. But if you take Cedar Street and turn left at the Pink Daycare Center, you'll see Anderson Drive, and you'll need to go about two more blocks before you discover the horror from beyond the grave. I came as soon as I got your message, Heim, but I got lost at the intersection of Maple and Tremont. Eli, you schmuck! Didn't I tell you to turn left at Veracruz Lane just before the big house with all the lawn ornaments and to go past three stoplights until you hit Clayton Place? Yak, yak, you make me sick with all your talking. After I got at the second stoplight, I saw they were doing road work. I got lost on the detour. Oh, well, it doesn't matter now. There's a maniac coming at you with the knife, and I don't think he wants a slice of the fish. Oi! From the makers of Silent Night, Deadly Night comes Yom Kippur, the only religious holiday not yet made into a spider film. Hold on to your matzah. It's Yom Kippur. Come in, Sheriff. This is Deputy Simmons at the scene of the murder. You'd better send in some boys from Homicide on this one. Well, I sent them already, but I think they took Sunset Drive to the Pollington Lane exit. That exit's closed, Sheriff. I took the quick route along State Avenue, then down to the rotary across from the quick trip, then back up to Walnut Street. Walnut Street? Oh, my God, I told them to take Westmont Street. But that street's one way, Sheriff. You've got to do something before it's too late. Nothing can stop the terror that is Yom Kippur in Kosherama. Coming soon to the mall theaters. Call for directions. They're disgusting, mistrusting, corrupting, and cold. Revolting, insulting, but with hearts of gold. Ignorant, and decadent, and vigilant, and violent. What a nutty bunch. The repulsives. The repulsives. The repulsives. You could lose your lunch. Who are you and what do you want? Hi, my name's John Moore. I have a date with Bunny tonight? Yeah, you and the Vienna Boys Choir. Well, come in, I suppose. My name's Bubba Repulsive, but you can call me what my friends do. What's that? How should I know? I don't have any friends. But if I did, they'd call me Mr. Repulsive, and so will you. Now, before I let you defile my daughter, I have to ask you one question. Yes? Are you now, or have you ever been a member or a representative of a law enforcement agency? And if not, show me your money. Uh, no. No, you are not now, nor have you ever been a member nor a representative of a law enforcement agency? Or no, you will not show me your money? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, here. Uh, five, ten, fifteen... Or... Okay, here's your money back. No one sees Bunny without twenty bucks. And no one leaves here with the twenty bucks. She's busy with someone else right now. Go sit over there by Grandpa. <coughs> Bubba! Is there someone else down there? Yeah, but it's for Bunny! Well, he's gonna have to wait a while! Bunny's water just broke! Was the guy finished? No! Damn, there goes 20 bucks. Hello, this is Bubble Repulsive. Bunny's water just broke. Come on over. Was that the doctor? No, that's the guy who's buying Bunny's kid. Listen, if you're in a hurry, my wife's not doing much. She's only $15. And my son's not doing anything either. I can let you have him for 10 Father, I must protest this exploitation of my person. <sighs> Cloud's the black sheep of the family. <laughs> And then there's Grandpa, I suppose. Actually, he's nobody's Grandpa. We just found him in the street. We took him in and made him one of our own. He doesn't cost much, since he only eats beans, and we collect his Social Security. <laughs> Who are you, and what do you want? Hello, I bought a baby from you. I'm here to pick up another supply of formula. Was that formula B1 or B2? B1. What's in that stuff anyway? We tried to give the baby regular formula, but it would keep on sucking until the bottle caved in. It's just pure mother's milk. Best thing for a baby. That'll be five bucks. Did he buy a baby from Bunny too? No, he bought a kid for my wife, Bertha. 
You mean to say you sell your own children? Oh, they're not my children. The only ones that are mine are the two we kept, which we rent out. But if you want to buy one, I can let you have the boy cheap. Father? Who are you and what do you want? I'm Glenn Ross Mitchell and I bought a baby from you a while back. I've since found out that it's a crack baby. <laughs> you must have gotten one of Bunny's kids. If it was Bertha's, it'd be a smack baby. I've also had your special formula tested and found out that it's not pure mother's milk. It's been laced with crack. That's a lie. It is 100% pure mother's milk. It's the mother who's been laced with crack. Listen up, Repulsive. You have until midnight tonight to give me my money back. Either that or you give birth to a healthy baby. If not, I'm going to blow up this black market brothel and hopefully you with it. Claude, go get Grandpa some more beans while I think this through. Maybe I should just go. Nonsense. Bunny will be ready in just a few minutes. Hey, Bertha, would the guy up there like to have another shot at Bunny when she's through? <laughs> no, you can forget about those beans, Claude. <laughs> Gee, kid, maybe you should go if you're not feeling good. Damn, I feel like Ralphin myself. I gotta come up with Mitchell's money or something, or else we blow up go boom. Who are you and what do you want? Hello, sir. My wife and I have traveled many miles. We are very tired and my wife is heavy with child. The inn is full and we need lodging for the night. How heavy with child is she? She could have the babe this eve. Well, come on in. <laughs> Make yourselves at home. I'm Bubba Repulsive. I am Joseph and this is Mary, my wife. Well, how do? Ooh, wait a minute. Does Mary do any heavy drugs that you know of? No. Well then, how do again? <laughs> Let me introduce you to everyone. This is my son, Claude. Pleased to make your acquaintance. This is Grandpa. <laughs> this is some guy waiting to pork my daughter. So, how long have you two kids been married? We have been wed for only a few months. <laughs> Couldn't wait till the honeymoon, eh? Actually, I have yet to lay with my wife. You haven't stooped your own wife yet? <laughs> I can understand your wife having someone else's bun in her oven, but I can't understand you not being one of the bakers. She has known no man. She is a virgin. What is she? Artificially inseminated? She is carrying the Son of God. She is the Madonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Prince. Listen, Joe, I wouldn't go believe in everything my wife told me if I were you. I'd say you're both probably on some heavy drugs. Later that night... <laughs> Who are you and what do you... Damn it, Grandpa! Quit that infernal farting! Claude, take away those beans. He's had enough. And try to revive Bunny's date, will you? Damn it, Grandpa! I told you to quit that damn... Who are you and what do you... Oh, Mr. Mitchell, how nice to see you again. What the hell's that star above your house, Repulsive? And what the hell's that smell? <coughs> well, that's probably Grandpa you're smelling. Plus, there was a bunch of shepherds here earlier, and none of them wiped before they came in. So, do you have my money? I don't exactly have your money, but I have something even better. Here! <coughs> What's this? Gold! I was going to give you another baby, but I think it was radioactive or something. Its head glowed. <laughs> then three guys came by and dropped off some stuff, including this gold. Well, see this? This is a letter that was to be sent to the police, which tells all about your various activities here. But since everything's been ironed out, I guess there's no need for it now. So we'll see to it that it's destroyed. No, don't let that match! The repulses, the repulses, the repulses, you could lose your lunch. Once again, it's KPUD's live remote caroling expedition, and we're on our way to Ned Campbell's for a brief stop. You're not serious about going on, are you? Oh, yes, I am, Romeus. We haven't sung one full song to an audience yet, and we won't stop until we do. Mr. Quigley, my boots are soggy. Can't we take a car? I'm getting really cold, too. Ned's better be our final stop. Only if we have an audience. If we can't perform there, we'll continue to broadcast elsewhere. I guess I can trudge on without singing to cute guys, but this whole thing isn't as exciting as you promised. Why didn't we plan our stops? Maybe you don't need time to breathe warm air, Mr. Quigley, but the rest of us do. I wish I was at home listening to this broadcast. Then I could change the station. Keep those spirits high, folks. But Ned's house is just down the hill. It's a shack. I'm too tired to sing to a shack. Now just remember, Christmas is a time of giving, so give your heart and soul to this remote broadcast and make this performance our best. I'll ring Ned's doorbell. Uh-uh, not until we sing for him. Turn your books to page... Uh, uh, oh, just look up Silent Night. Uh, you got it? Let's begin. <clears throat> Silent Night. 
holy night, and all is up. Oh, just don't forget it. Just rip that one out, too. Hello, folks. I've been listening to you on the radio. You sound like you were right outside. Come on in. Ah, freedom from Quigley. He's worse than the cold. Daddy should have sent him out alone. Ned, I, I really appreciate you having us all over here this evening. I'm sorry, Mr. Quigley, but there's only room for four people in here. But I thought you said you could house the whole group. I did. But you said there were three people with you. You didn't say you'd be staying. Uh, Ned, we haven't even sung one song for the listeners. Uh, Can't you squeeze me in so we can do a quick number? I'm sorry, but with all my books, you four would have to stand on the ceiling to fit. No, I'm not going oh, back out there. I'm not going out again. Way way more. More. Oh, I've got the listeners to think about, but I can't let these people down. Ned, tell the trio that we're finished, okay? But I thought you had to sing on the show. Uh, just forget it, Ned. I've done enough with Romeo, Jenny, and Mrs. Fenster tonight. Uh, tell them good night and happy holidays from me. Okay, so long, Mr. Quigley. And so, listeners, another landmark event in KPUT broadcasting draws to a close. I extend my apologies to anyone who thought we would perform one complete song. That was too large a dream for the trio and me. But I can still narrate the events of my long, cold walk back to the studio. <clears throat> Most of the plants are dead now, as are the small animals this time of year. Um, the wires are frozen, the snow is dripping off, and uh, I'm taking my fifth step away from the house now. Boy, this, this thing is... Heavy. Mr. Quigley, Mr. Quigley, come back. What, what is it, Ned? What? We've got a surprise for you. Hold your microphone up. Okay, but what? What a friend we have in Quigley Dragging us through the chilly air What a friend we have in Quigley He let us go inside That was fantastic! The best singing this evening! How come you We heard you on Ned's radio. We owed you at least one song, since you did lead us to one warm place. That, and we couldn't stand listening to you narrate every single event in your way home. Well, thank you all very much. And Ned, thanks for bringing me back. Anything for seasonal cheer, Mr. Quigley. Want to stick your head inside and hear yourself on the radio? Sure, I'll just put the mic in first, and uh, then I'll say, Hello, listeners, welcome to Ned Campbell's radio, and Ned Campbell's media. Maybe I'd better just get back to the station. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Mr. Quigley. Quigley. Merry Christmas to you. And on behalf of us all here at KPUG, thank you for listening. And good night. <laughs> KPUT was conducted, concluded, and confused by Hector DeGene... Glenn Keenan, and Stephen Scholes. Special thanks to Dave Kinty, Brian McDermott, Chad Sanders, Barb Spangers, Eric Walkie, and Gene Weisshire. Thanks also to Dan Coffey for encouragement, KRUI for equipment and support, and Ben DeGene, fast becoming a legend in Hollywood. Join us again sometime. Until then, best wishes for a safe semester break from KPUT. KPUT.